and we are back with the fifth segment talk in gsmc podcast brought to you by the gsmc sports network and jesus christ i messed up that intro badly because i have no idea why but in this fifth segment we are going to be talking about this new series that's going to be premiering soon i believe on um max i'm not entirely sure i have to go check again but <clears throat> it's going to be about the Clippers' previous owner. Actually, no, it's going to be on FX and on Hulu, excuse me. It's going to be called Clipped. Now, this is a story, this is going to be a story inspired by the Clippers' former owner, Donald Sterling, who was banned for life from the NBA. And I will go ahead and explain, just give a brief little history of um, uh, Donald Sterling and his, you know, many problems with certain people that, uh, again, you guys, you guys will understand, like, directly after, like, after the segment. So, for those of you who don't know, um, Donald Sterling, he was the owner for the Clippers for arguably the longest time, up until 2014, I believe. And the re he was re he was banned for life in the NBA. Now I'm looking at this article. I actually have several articles pulled up. I'll look at the ESPN article first, since you know that one is, you know, a little bit more accurate in my opinion. So it was morning of Game Five of the Warriors 2014 first round playoff series against the Clippers. Four days earlier, TMZ had published voice recordings of the Clippers owner, Donald Sterling, making racist statements to his mistress, B. Stiviano. Uh, yes, that's how you pronounce the name. Throwing the NBA into a tailspin. When Myers called his boss with a status report, he told him in no uncertain terms, these guys are going to walk off the floor, Welch recalled. He has, he was with the team that morning and said the vibe around the team, maybe both teams, was that if this doesn't go the way the players want it to go, that they could walk out on the floor and then walk right off and not play the game with them and not play the game that night. Donald Sterling had been a blight on the NBA for three decades. There were dozens of incidents that could have been grounds to kick him out of the league, but this tape was something else. In your, this was, this is a quote, in your lousy effing Instagram, you don't have to have yourself walking around with black people, Sterling told Stiviano. It bothers me a lot that you want to promote broadcasts that you're associating with black people. Do you have to? At one point, Stiviano asked Sterling, do you know that you have a whole team that's black that plays for you? And he responds, do I know? I support them and give them food and clothes and cars and houses. Who gives it to them? Does someone else give it to them? Who makes the game? Do I make the game or do they make the game? The NBA players, they were appalled. They threatened to boycott playoff games if new NBA commissioner Adam Silver didn't get rid of Sterling quickly and definitively. And LeBron James, who played for the Miami Heat at the time, there's no room for that in our game. And he said the, the morning after the tapes were released, can't have that from a player. We can't ever have, we can't, mm, excuse me, can't have that from a player. We can't ever from an owner. We can't have it from a fan and so on and so on. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Hispanic, or whatever the case may be. We can't have that as part of our game. Silver was less than 90 days into the job, and he had a full-fledged crisis on his hands. The players were on the verge of shutting down the league in protest, and the threat was far more credible than anyone knew at the time. Um, I was all in, like shut down the whole season, which was Andre Iguodala said. Andre Iguodala was all for it. Maybe that was too far, but as far as that game that day, you can reschedule it. You got to sort this thing out because there's some deep-rooted stuff with him that had to be addressed. 
the Clippers, the Warriors, the NBA, it was uncharted territory for everyone. No team had ever refused to start a game in the NBA before, never mind the playoffs. It would have been an incredible statement. If we didn't play, Jamal Crawford said, who was on the Clippers at that point, I think that honestly, it would have outlived us. They would be talking about that while we're not here anymore. It's never happened at that magnitude, at that level. And if the Clippers and Warriors boycotted one game, what would happen to the rest of the playoffs? That's sort of been like, you know, the stipulation around the entire situation with, Ster with um, Sterling. And what the basis of the story is going to be for the, um, for the clipped show that's going to be on Hulu. Now... I'm looking at the Bleacher Report article. Silver announced that the NBA concluded its investigation with the belief that it was Sterling's voice on the audio tape. Sterling confirmed it was his voice on the tape via ABC News. Silver made it clear the league stood together in its opposition of the owner. And finally, Silver expressed the hope that no long-term damage would come to the league or the Clippers organization via Adam Zagoria of SNY.com and Steve Kyler of Basketball Insiders. Following the announcement, messages of support came in from around the league. NBPA Vice President Roger Mason said that players were prepared to boycott playoff games, yada yada yada, basically everything that I just previously said. And the Clippers changed their team website following the news, issuing a statement of unity before Game 5 versus Golden State via ESPN Sports Center. The organization also refused to issue a statement via Markazi on April 25th. TMZ Sports reported that it had Sterling on tape chastising Stiviano for associating with black people. So it's really like, it's just, it's dumb things. Like it's really just like the racism that he was um, displaying. It was just nothing for this league. And now I'm looking at this ABC News article about the, um, about the incident. He was fined, um, $2.5 million for his racist comments and was forced to sell the team to the new owner, which is, <clears throat> excuse me. So now that, you know, he sold the team, which is honestly like, is that really a punishment? Like, I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but like, is that really a punishment? Because forcing someone to sell a team for billions of dollars, that just means that you're just making billions of dollars. And it's like, it's not really a real punishment for, um, for him, at least for, for Sterling. I really don't think like, I, I thought that punishment was absolutely hilarious because it was like, he was banned. Obviously, he should have been banned. But then he was forced to sell the team for like $2 billion. Like I'm looking at the Yes, exactly. He's forced he was forced to sell the team to Steve Ballmer for $2 billion. Like, wow, such such a punishment. He says racist remarks and boom, $2 billion shows up in his bank account. That is it's like, like, you can't make that up. You just can't make that up. Is there something on my camera hold on just one second let me fix it yeah i don't know what that was there was something on my camera and it was it was blocking the view i apologize for that but he sold the team for two billion dollars like whoa such a such a crime and this is what the hulu series is going to be about because i guess it's going to like shed some new light on the on the entire scandal and like every other problem that he had with the um with the Clippers. So here are the key allegations. Audio, the audio recording, male voice identified by Stiviano and the NBA as Donald Sterling, chastising Stiviano for posting pictures of herself with black people on her Instagram. Stiviano points out that she is black and Latina. Sterling says that it is fine because she can seem like a quote, delicate white or delicate Latina girl. This is all on ABC News. Like, this is from the article, so, like, don't quote me on that. That is absolutely disgusting, the fact that he even had that thought in his head. Stiviano's lawyers released a statement saying that the audio tape was part of a one-hour recording and confirmed that the voices were that of Stiviano and Sterling. They denied that she made the recording public. Next accusation, the team released a statement saying Mr. Sterling is emphatic that what 
is reflected on that recording is not consistent with, nor does it reflect his views, beliefs, or feelings. It is the antithesis of who he is, what he believes, and how he has lived his life. And another thing, Donald Sterling has faced allegations of racial discrimination in the past. In November 2009, he agreed to pay a $2.7 million settlement to settle allegations that he refused to rent apartments to Hispanics and Blacks and the families with children. In 2011, Sterling won a lawsuit brought by former Clippers general manager Elgin Baylor over harassment and discrimination claims. All on it. This is all on ABC News. All these accusations are on ABC News. In a lawsuit filed by Sterling's wife, Rochelle Sterling, she claims that her husband began an affair with Stiviano at the 2010 Super Bowl, and the pair have been together since. Which is, it's very odd for me, because it's like, how are you going to say that, you know, how are you going to be so prejudiced, or I guess, you know, allegedly prejudiced towards all of these? I, actually, you know what? It's not even allegedly because this is already confirmed. How are you going to be like so prejudiced against um, these kinds of people, but at the same time have a wife that is part of those kinds of people? It's, it's so hilarious to me because it's like, what? The amount of, the amount of hypocrite, like the hypocritism is ridiculous. And yeah, that's really like all that needs to be said about uh, this segment. So with that, that is going to be the end of the show. And that is going to be the end of the fifth segment. That's all that I have to say about that. So thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us. So please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok and Instagram for more content and updates. As usual, please remember to use the link in the description or the link displayed below the ticker on every single show segment to get your comments recognized. The link is gsmcpodcast.net. It really helps the show, makes the show much more interactive between myself and you guys. That is all I have for this podcast today. Thank you so much. I am your host, Nelson, and as always, take care. <laughs> Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great? I don't.